Good evening, everyone. My name is Pravangi Jain from Valorum Advisors. We represent the Investor Relations for Infolian Research Services Limited. On behalf of the company, I would like to thank you all for participating in the company's earnings conference call for the first half of the financial year 2025. Before we begin, let me mention a short cautionary statement. Some of the statements made in today's earnings call may be forward-looking in nature. Such forward-looking statements are subject to risk and uncertainties, which could cause actual results to differ from those anticipated. Such statements are based on management's belief as well as assumptions made by and information currently available to the management. Audiences are cautioned not to place any undue reliance on these forward-looking statements in making any investment decisions. The purpose of today's earnings call is probably to educate and bring awareness about the company's fundamental business and how we are financial under review. Now let me introduce you to the management participating with us in today's earnings call. We have with us Mr. Gaurav Gunjal, Managing Director, Mr. Varun Khandelwal, VP Research, Mr. Abhay Sangal, VP Operations, Mr. Abhishek Jha, CFO, and Ms. Madhumita Pranamu, CF and Compliance Officer. Without any delay, I request Mr. Gaurav Gunjal to start with his opening remarks. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank, thanks a lot for the introduction, Purvangi. So a very, very warm welcome to everyone joining us today for a earnings conference call uh, to discuss the performance of first half of FI25. Uh, so before we uh, get into the details, a uh, quick recap, uh, and especially in the interest of those participants who are joining us today uh, who are still unfamiliar with the business, uh, a quick overview. So we are a, a almost 15 year old company. We are a marketplace for experts. Uh, we operate as a platform for connecting clients with uh, skilled professionals, which we call it, whom we call as experts. So our uh, services could be uh, independent consultations, micro consultations, contingent hiring and temporary workforce management. So uh, we leverage our proprietary technical framework and uh, market research capabilities to connect or provide a platform and a platform to grant on-demand access to our clients. On-demand on access of our experts to our uh, clients. So these clients are typically management consulting firms, private equity funds, hedge funds, and large corporations. So we deliver such expert assistance to uh, through a meticulously vetted network of almost 90,000 experts uh, on an average posting a, a experience of almost 20, 25 years. So uh, I'll, I'll start with, a, with what happened in the first half of uh, this financial year as well as a quick recap of FI24. So in FI24, we had uh, gone IPO. We focused mostly on uh, stabilizing the company, setting up a foundation for the growth, which was yet to come. So we focused on the recruitment front. Uh, we took a slow and steady approach, expanded at a pace, which was very comfortable, but much faster than previous years. So we spent a fair amount of time training our team for middle management, as well as at the entry level, making sure that our, uh, uh, making sure the next, uh, next uh, generation of leaders are getting ready. And, uh, and of course, we uh, spent a fair amount of time. In fact, most of the management bandwidth was spent on uh, stabilizing the tech, increasing the tech part, and making it uh, far more uh, robust and ready at the global level. So uh, as I said, in the last FI, our focus was on strengthening the foundation. This year, we shifted our focus to uh, more of an expansion stage. So uh, we're uh, primarily US. So uh, in our objects, we had said that we would be expanding into US and we set up a subsidiary this this uh, in the first half this year. Uh, in this context, we also have some announcements. So uh, primarily three announcements. Uh, so Abhay Sangal, who was taking care of op operations at, at Infolian earlier, he has been uh, appointed as country head US. 
Parina Kalra, uh, who was promoted to AVP uh, operations uh, again in, uh, a few months ago, she'll be st stepping into uh, shoes of Abhe for the India operations. So we also have one more service line, uh, which we are trying to expand into. Uh, Varun Khandelwal, who was earlier taking care of research, will also be taking care of all new initiatives under the brand name Uksa in the corporate L&D domain. So besides this, uh, a quick outlook of FI25, we have, as I said, we are experimenting with newer offerings uh, from the existing demand supply ecosystem. We would be leveraging our own tech, our own experts to uh, explore and experiment with uh, adjacencies. Uh, from a geographic perspective, we are taking care to, we are taking steps to establish a 24 seven operations for cross-border projects, especially in MENA, SCA, ANZ, uh, and of course, US, where we have a separate team now. So we plan to increase our market share within the client categories where we have started uh, making uh, some inroads as well. Hopefully some numbers would start getting reflected through in the next financial year. And, uh, we are very sure that we would not like to leave any blind spots within our existing clients. We have been extremely focused on, on the numbers and KPIs to make sure that uh, any gaps or uh, if we are able to identify any gaps in our organic growth, we should be able to plug them immediately. So that's uh, broadly it from my side. I will now request Abhishek to give you a brief on the financials. Yeah, thanks, Gaurav. Uh, Good evening to all the participants. We had a strong performance in the first half of the financial year 2024 and 25, where we reported a significant growth across all the parameters. For the first half, revenue from operations went up by 40% to 35 crores. EBITDA was at 7 crores with a growth of 33%, and EBITDA margin was more than 20%. Net profit was almost 6 crores with a growth of over 40%, and the PET margins were almost 17%. Precise figures are given in the financial statements, which is available with the company's website and also filed with the NSC. So thank you. And now I think we can move to the Q&A session. Thank you. We'll now begin the Q&A session. If you have any questions, please raise the hand icon at the bottom of the Zoom window. You can also type your question in the chat box and we will ask the question on your behalf to the management. In a order to allow maximum participation, I request each individual to restrict your questions to only two per person, please. Mr. Shubham, yeah, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, hi, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, hi, hi, uh, hi, Gaurav, sir and team. Uh, congratulations for a oh. superb half uh, yearly uh, that you have reported. So my first question is, uh, is there any attrition rate among the experts that we have witnessed in this uh, half year? My understanding is that uh, on average around 10% uh, of the experts generate majority of our revenues, right? So what, uh, how are we ensuring that uh, these 90, these 10% experts are uh, remaining active for us? Also, are there any uh, avenues that we're exploring to monetize uh, these 10% experts more? Let me take this question. Uh, so, so these ten percent are not a uh, absolute, uh, absolutely identified number. So it changes year on year. So, so on an average, we end up using ten percent because we uh, not not all the experts have uh, are are not recently on the panel. So. There is the, the, the term attrition of experts is not a very uh, valid term here because uh, they always have the option to opt in or opt out of the project. So even if they are registered, they would not like to deregister. It is just that over a period of time, uh, when their knowledge becomes a little stale, they tend to fizzle out uh, or if there aren't any projects or deals in that particular domain, they tend to fizzle out. So they don't get attracted in the sense that they leave the platform. They are always available if required. Now, second question was, are we doing anything to, uh, you know, leverage those 10%? As I said again, so they are not fixed 10%. They may change uh, over a period of time and that percentage would over a 
would slowly go down because as the base increases uh, we we are adding more and more and more experts so uh, yes so we of course we have been trying to leverage the same experts for more projects more geographies and also more offerings so uh, understood sir uh, also uh, another question was uh, what would be the average ticket size uh, this yearly for uh, our calls in india as well as uh, in the us i think that has been disclosed uh, that th that has been disclosed in the number it is, it should be uh, broadly the same as last year understood okay thank you thank, thank you. you mr shikhar munda Mr. Shikhar Mundra, please go ahead. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Hi. Congrats on a good set of numbers. So, wanted a clarity. If I see your cash flow statements, I see a eighty-four lakh investment in the U.S. subsidiary. Uh, but if I see the funds of uh, IPO utilized, I see around four crores has been spent in uh, expansion of service line in U.S. and Western Europe. So. Uh, just to get a sense of it, like how much of it have we expensed out and how much of it has we capitalized for the investments in US? I, I think Abhishek, would you like to take that? Okay. I'll just give you a quick overview. So this includes the, U, the team which works in US hours in India as well. That is also attributed to that. And the subsidiary, which is the front end in US, where we would be, uh, where we have recently set up operations. So Abhishek, would you like to add something to it? Yeah, so that 85 lakhs you, that you see in the uh, subsidiary investment that is capitalized and often, uh, them are uh, under the revenue, uh, under the expenses. Okay, so the so, majority, okay, uh, yeah. so only 84 lakhs is capitalized. So rest uh, yes. of the 4 crores, uh, 3 crores, 15 lakhs is expensed out. That yes, is correct. Yes. All right. And, and around 85 lakhs is yet to be expensed. Right. So, are we generating any revenues as of now from US? So, uh, uh, cross-border revenue is being generated from experts in US, which you can find uh, in the payment section. Okay. In in our last AGM, we have in the last annual report, you would find a, a section where we have disclosed how, how many payments are being done to experts outside India. The a significant part of it is in US. Uh, have we generated a lot of business from clients in US? No, that is yet to begin. Okay, okay. And uh, this increase in employee benefit expense from uh, from six to eight crore has been uh, due to uh, hiring of additional employees for the US subsidiary. Right. A, a lot of it. We have been expanding our Indian subsidiary as well, US as well, and new initiatives as well. In yeah. fact, we have expanded a tech team. So we have, in general, expanded uh, the, the team. Right, right. Uh, and the so amount I which... request you to come back in the question queue, please. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from Ms. Akshay. Thank you for opportunity. Congratulations for good set of numbers, uh, Gaurav sir and team. Uh, sir, my first question is, uh, what is the split of revenue between corporates, consulting firm and investment firm in this year, And how do we see it shaping up in the future? Uh, th 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 thank you, Akshay, for this. Uh, it's broadly the same split as last year. Uh, the di directionally, the percentage of financial investors is uh, likely to be higher in the at the end of this financial year. We don't have the numbers ready as of now. We haven't disclosed, but uh, uh, directionally, I can say that at the end of this uh, financial year, we should be seeing more representations from financial investors. Okay. And sir, in your annual uh, report, in your communication, you mentioned that uh, this year we are focusing more on building a, a solid foundation rather than expanding, but we are likely to change the gear. And uh, right. so, you... So so that annual report was FI24, and now we have kind of changed the gears, and uh, we are more of the expansion mode right now. So we we in, in the second quarter of uh, uh, first or second quarter of last financial year, which is FI24, we did the IPO. So the first thing we did was we recruited a lot of people, trained a lot of people, set up the tech, 
set up the subsidiaries and now we are actually trying to implement everything what you've done last year. Okay, so new growth will come from one US and second new initiatives that you are doing. Yes, besides the market share expansion uh, and a new set of clients, uh, there are three set of, uh, primarily three or four set of growth areas which we are targeting. Okay. The non-organic growth is likely to come from these two, either US or uh, new initiatives or both. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Rohit Balakrishnan, please go ahead. Yeah, hi Gaurav and hi everybody. Uh, congrats on a very good num uh, performance. Uh, so uh, Gaurav, just uh, two questions actually. So one, uh, in terms of, uh, so you said you you spending about uh, three 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 crores and a bit in the in setting up your US subsidiary and expanding that team. Uh, so I mean, not this half year or next half year, but just from your perspective. Uh, so how are you seeing that? I mean, uh, you said you're not generating any revenue, which is fine, but just to understand from your perspective, uh, how are things shaping up and what, I mean, uh, just if you can just spend a bit more time because that's a huge market. So if you can just spend a bit more time explaining where we are, how things are shaped up, are you confident now that the scale up will happen? If not in this year, but maybe like wherever you see, so just you can spend a bit time there. Yes, yes, yes. Hi, Rohit, so thank, thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, so US, uh, no, so, Generating revenue from the U.S. subsidiary from U.S. clients is a separate problem. Generating revenue from U.S. experts is a separate problem. We have been doing very well on the U.S. experts bit where we have been uh, building up our U.S. network and utilizing it for Indian clients who are seeking expert calls in U.S., which you can see in the uh, annual report. There is a very sizable increase in the number of calls which we have been doing from uh, US experts. So the team is actually doing that. Right. So the U the team which works in India in US hours is doing that for the US subsidiaries primarily the front end work which we will start shortly. So that is something which we do not have too much visibility for the, from India to outside calls which primarily US we have a fair amount of visibility which we have written in the AG or the annual report. Right. And and that you see continue to sort of scale yes, up. Yes, yes. So we see that is going to, uh, anyways, it's, it's a very uh, significant trend over the last few years. Uh, over, even over the last year, we have seen an increase and it is likely to continue that we would start seeing more and more uh, payments to international experts. Uh, although the revenue would be recognized in India, but that will, that right. is being, the US team is actually working for Indian clients as well who are seeking US exports. So just as a follow up to this, in terms of then, I mean, for you to, once you have, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but once you have an engaged pool of experts uh, on the supply side, then uh, would it make it easier for you to then actually go out and generate revenue in the US as well? I mean, but exactly the point, right? So if we go too prematurely to US and start doing sales and we cannot service them because we do not have experts, we will end up wasting money. So uh, in any kind of a marketplace, both sides go hand in hand. So now we have concentrated our experts in a couple of sectors where we are not very happy with the size of the panel, but we are okay to at least kickstart our sales efforts so that by the end of one year, two year, we have substantial expert size over there. So that's the reason we have now started doing sales in US while we have been building the network for the last one and a half years. Right, right. And just two small questions. One on the organic growth in India. Uh, so how are you seeing, I mean, obviously, uh, fantastic performance in H1, but do you see the sustaining? Because we keep hearing some murmurs around bench being very high in consulting companies and, and growth not being as strong as uh, what one reads in the general headline. So, I mean, if you can just maybe talk on that and also some words around uh, the corporate learning part, if you can share. Sure, sure, sure. So corporate learning anyways, uh, VK will share in detail, but uh, I, I'll pick up the first part. See, organically, yes, we have also heard consulting may or may not do well, uh, but my sense is that uh, they have 
deaccelerated, not degrowing. So, so they were accelerating at 40, 50 percent. They are probably uh, growing at 20, 30 percent uh, in terms of recruitments. Maybe not in terms of revenue. Uh, so maybe they were expecting a lot of growth, and that's why they recruited a lot of people. Uh, and they might have slowed down the recruitments, which means they've slowed down the growth rate, not the growth. So that's my understanding. Having said that, uh, we would like to take a slightly long-term view here that uh, uh, even if it is a bit low or high in the next coming quarters or a few halves, it doesn't matter. Overall, the trajectory at an Indian level for organic growth, we are looking from a long-term perspective and it stays firmly intact. As long as the country is growing, the, the, the corporate earnings are growing, uh, I see no reason for consulting companies to not grow. Uh, obviously, they will not grow in a straight line. There will be peaks and troughs, but uh, the, directionally, I don't see a problem. But essentially, you, ah, got it, got it. You don't see any major hiccups, at least in the near term for you. I, I, to be honest, I'm not the best person for it, right? Maybe the consultants would be uh, no, uh, best place for that. View. I mean, from from our saying? perspective, from our perspective, we haven't seen too much of a change. Sure. As of now, it may or may not, of but uh, as of now, we haven't seen too much of a change. In fact, not a change at all. Not even too much is the right. Great. And on the corporate learning side. We yes, so we will we will have a uh, we will give a quick brief uh, whenever there is a relevant question. Uh, so VK is prepared for that. So, I mean, maybe I can ask that question. I mean, I just wanted to, I mean, so. Uh, in okay, terms of okay then we can go ahead. Uh, so, we were kind of prepared on something on new initiatives. Uh, we can will give you a quick brief. Absolutely. Rohit, you want to lead with a question? Should I just go ahead and. <laughs> yeah, if, why, why don't you go ahead? Why don't you go yes, ahead? Sir. Yes, sir. Better. So as, you, as you all know, right, we, we've been working on this corporate L&D initiative under the brand name Hoxha. Uh, a primary target here is corporates, uh, Indian businesses, second, third family run businesses, mid-tier corporates, top-tier corporates and so on. What we're essentially trying to do is uh, leverage the, the gold mine that we have, the, the, the extremely high precision uh, uh, you know, expertise of our experts. So we're leveraging that and uh, delivering l and uh, programs, knowledge sharing sessions for our clients. Uh, we, we've been uh, making a few waves around. Uh, we, we've kind of uh, expanded uh, in, in terms of uh, geography and team and everything. Uh, what our focus right now is on making, you know, very uh, deep domain, high precision learning interventions or as, as you like to call it, modules. So learning modules is something that we are trying to make. We're coming, we're coming up with very, very high precision, high tech modules around different industries and sectors. Each module you can think of as a, as a 90 minute to one hour, two hours kind of a session delivered by an industry expert, uh, the SME. Uh, uh, so think of it a typical uh, a, a three day course might consist of about six to eight modules in terms of learning, right? Likewise, a, a succession planning course for about three months for a third generation family business uh, could could involve a series of modules, including uh, domestic and international site visits, which again qualify as modules. So uh, that's, that's how we're trying to build a repository of learning uh, assets and modules. Uh, a typical module, if you think of, would, would cost similar to a one hour consultation for our clients. Uh, our, our target right now is to curate the first 1,000 about uh, modules, uh, you know, uh, of our own in-house. And then, of course, we'll open it up to our experts to contribute modules. So we're going to also source a lot of uh, learning content from our experts. Obviously, it'll be vetted, screened, and, uh, uh, you know, in partnership with our instructional designers that we have in-house. So, yeah, we, 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 we've uh, made about a few few uh, modules so far around 100 or so uh, we built a team of five members including lms administrator and instructional designers a couple of client servicing guys uh, we are putting a lot of focus around uh, you know getting the fundamentals and the infrastructure right for this uh, service line uh, and of course down the line how we look at it is our client should be able to mix and match modules and experts 
to uh, you know suit their objective so they, they they will not be i mean they'll have complete flexibility to learn and you know pick up and choose what they really want to learn where they want the right interventions and then of course you know design their own learning journeys that's how that's how we are uh, planning to do uh, right now we're in the like we call the the ce phase and uh, we were also gradually doing a bit of ge so ce is custom empanelments working on inbound client requests for all the lnd requests that we get and of course parallelly our instructional designers are also working with our experts to general impanel kind of uh, you know in that parlance create modules of our own that we will offer to our clients so that's that's a bit of update on huxa from my end got it no this is very very useful uh, varun uh, any sector specific or uh, functions how are you sort of cutting that not really uh, uh, okay in terms of our own outreach we are focusing on the top four sectors for us which is uh auto manufacturing bfsi and pharma uh but uh our, our sales team doesn't really stop there so we we got in oh. leads from a lot of other sectors including media and uh, it and a lot of stuff so yeah we were working with a lot of clients uh, uh mostly uh we're sector agnostic and of course we cover all functions we're not restricted there because we leverage our existing pool of experts around it so or it no this sounds very interesting so probably i'll catch up in the coming months and learn oh, more thank you so much thank you so much and all the best guys thanks thank you mr bhavish gupta please go ahead hello yeah am i audible yes sir you are hi gaurav first of all congratulations on such outstanding set of results um so i had already put this question on chat and some part of it is already answered so in the uh, november con call we discussed that around 80% of our revenue is concentrated to top 5 consulting companies and bit uh, and we had discussed that we would be increasing our focus to buy and sell side funds including pgs and vcs because a lot of the international players like glg third bridge are concentrated there so have we had some success in that regard have have we been able to onboard some of these players in the last one year and now how does our top 5 uh, how how much revenue is coming from our top 5 to 10 clients as opposed to 80% from last year okay. so so th thanks bhavesh uh, thanks for the kind words so i am not too sure about the 80% for five clients number i think it was slightly different which was disclosed not slightly it was different which was disclosed uh, Uh, last year, I think it was eighty. Uh, uh, so, so Abhishek, can you remind me ten uh, clients, uh, some percentage which was disclosed? So I'll I'll not uh, confirm this number. Second, uh, as I said, directionally, yes, we have onboarded a few private equity clients, uh, uh, which were not there with us earlier. In general, uh, we have also onboarded a few uh, uh, public market clients as well, but they are fairly small as of now. The overall contribution is fairly small. but hopefully we have once we have got a to hold it is likely to expand uh, in the coming few years as i said directionally uh, we are expecting a larger contribution by these clients uh, down the line as of now uh, we haven't seen a material change like at least in the historical number but uh, directionally we have onboarded so we would we should be getting some better numbers uh, over the next few years we got it what is it thanks a lot Thank you, Mr. Tane. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, Gaurav and team. Congratulations on a stunning set of numbers. Uh, just had a question around how are you dealing with competition from local firms like Vedak? So I know, for example, Bain. prefers to use vedak uh, because they are cost uh, effective i think more uh, cheaper than you guys so i know you've said that your usp is ops which is connecting the most highest level of expert with the requirement of the client but how do you deal with uh, new competitors coming in who are trying to price lower uh, uh, interesting question uh, uh, i i'm not completely sure that we are not preferred by uh, a lot of our clients uh, first things first i like to correct that we don't 
necessarily connect to the highest or the senior most expert we try to connect with the best possible expert at the best price so uh, uh, if it is not required we may or may not suggest but uh, that's what we try uh, on the pricing bit to be honest i think overall the market is not very price sensitive i'm not saying that uh, it will not be uh, it will be immaterial whether we offer at uh, uh, you know $400 versus $500 it might matter when it is 400 and 800 but it may not matter too much between 400 and 500 having said that uh, our gross margins are firmly under control not even an inch has changed and uh, we try our best to get the gross margins even lower so we believe that the gross margins where we are is is a sustainable long term gross margin and uh, if people can offer at a very cheap price i'm not sure that will be a long lasting one if they can uh, great uh, we will try to uh, you know get even more efficiencies to bring down our gross margins but the the amount of money which needs to be paid to similar experts remains the same that is the input which uh, which kind of remains the same as long as uh, you are focusing on quality so uh, to summarize i first i believe it is uh, the price is important, but it is not overtly price sensitive. I think this is more of value for money, yes, but uh, price cannot be the only choosing criteria for experts. Uh, second, uh, we believe that the gross margins where we have uh, are very, very efficient and competent, and uh, we try not to increase it. In fact, we try everything that's possible to uh, bring it down and uh, by improving efficiencies uh, at our end. Understood, Gaurav. Thanks. I just had a suggestion. Uh, yes, what I've observed is that some of the competitors like Insight Alpha, etc. are quite proactive in terms of reaching out to potential clients, uh, consultants at consulting firms saying they share profiles at a much faster rate on WhatsApp. They engage, they ask, do you have any requirements and so on? So do you have some sort of model of relationship managers loosely? Uh, which who are constantly yes, we, we do have that. We do have that. Uh, the thing is, uh, most of our, uh, a lot of clients actually discourage usage of outside platform thing. In fact, a lot of our compliance teams from the clients uh, strongly discourage usage of WhatsApp. So uh, while we do it once in a while, but uh, we tend to follow, we tend to be fairly strict on compliance bit from that perspective. And uh, yes, we do reach out uh, to our clients. There is a very there is a dedicated uh, uh, account manager for every reasonable size. Understood. And can I ask one more question, small one? Yes, of course. Which is uh, while let's say you have an expert onboarded and you have a particular rate which you're planning to charge the client, uh, the client could go back to a competitor saying that why don't you onboard this expert at whatever your rates or so on quickly. Uh, and try to sort of get it done from another competitor. So is there anything in place that we can do to avoid such sort of uh, poaching, so to say, of uh, our experts? Because I've heard that this is quite common. Yes, uh, I've also heard that. I would not say this is quite common. As a percentage, I think it should not be material enough. It happens, but as I said, uh, this market is more time sensitive than price sensitive. If the expert is available, that it is vetted. Uh, I, I have seen most of the clients being respectable to the uh, to the network who brings them first. Uh, does this happen? Of course, it does happen. Uh, we we've seen it umpteen number of times. Uh, but the expert tends to charge similar num similar amounts. So uh, only if if it, if it is actually actively being shared by the clients it can happen but as i said if we maintain our gross margins uh, for one or two cases it may happen but in the long run it should not happen too much got it thanks Gaurav, for the very detailed responses thank you thank you mr lakshmi narayan please go ahead yeah uh... 
Thank you. A couple of questions. Uh, am I audible, Gaurav? Yes. Hi. Hi, Ren. Go ahead. Hey, Gaurav. Uh, first, uh, see, if I just look at your, uh, you know, other income, uh, I think it's it's close to 0.99 uh, crores. Uh, am I right? And, uh, you know, you had a cash balance of close to, I think, uh, 31 crores or so. Uh, so just want to understand, I mean, if I just look at the um, uh, other income, it appears to be very low. Um, just want to understand, you know, is there a possibility for us to generate higher returns in our treasury? Uh... I think Abhishek should be a bit. This is this point nine nine is for uh, from what I understand for this half, right? Yeah, is from the uh, liquid investments and FDs and all. Uh, yeah, so, so we haven't really gone aggressive. So I think we haven't really gone aggressive on that. Yeah. We are we are actually we intend to use that money for expansions, including in organic yeah. expansions. Uh, so as of now, I think mm -hmm. it is all liquid and uh, maybe a bit of arbitrage but uh, for then from that perspective it seems to be a, a reasonable yeah because return. if i just look at it from a half year uh, the it, it's around 2.8 if i just assume uh, the starting um, we had around 31 crores in our balance sheet and if i just look at it uh, it appears to be too low and maybe uh, just a observation maybe i'll go to the next question um this you know just want to understand what is your repeat business and i say repeat business from the same clients who had given you business for the last year usually how does it work uh, is it uh, more than 95 percent is repeat business from the same clients i just want to understand the mix of new client uh, and old clients revenues so i think our top five clients uh, uh the short answer is that repeat business is very high uh, we depend a lot on our old clients and uh, hopefully uh, it is the same from a client perspective as well. And uh, I'm, I'm not sure of the exact number, but uh, it, it's a very significant number in terms of clients which well, are with us. upwards of 90, 95% or so? I am uh, so, so Abhishek, if you can share the precise number, it will be great. But if you don't have it handy, we'll come back to you. Uh, for now, we can say that... Uh, uh, I, I, I think uh, this year may not be uh, close to this, but uh, amongst the largest clients, I think all of them have been with us uh, for five years and more. Are you growing deeper in your clients? Is that uh, if you... Uh... Well, Our clients are growing and we are trying to go deeper as well in terms of market share, both. Good. So when you started this year... Um... In terms of your own strategy, budget, etc., and where we are now, uh, what has positively surprised you, and what has not surprised you positively? Uh, well, to be honest, there hasn't been too many surprises. We've been fairly on track from what we thought we will be at the end of uh, uh, first half, and. Uh, Definitely nothing negative, to be honest, as of now. Uh, on the positive side, again, we have seen some very good responses from our experts towards our new offerings. So that's something which we... Uh, mm -hmm. So we actually just tapped a very small sliver of our experts for making courses, and we literally got overwhelmed with the response. So so that kind of made us double down on the corporate training business. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the only thing. Uh, uh, besides that, pretty much on track, there are no surprises on either side. And, and what do you do to ensure you have a higher predictability of your revenues? Um, is there a way in which you, when you when you look at it, when you budget for the next six months or, or a year, uh, how do you look at predictability of your business and what how, how you internally uh, allocate resources for that? That's a very tough question to be honest. So how do I see in at a, at a macro level is that as long as the corporate earnings grow, we see consulting firms, especially strategy consulting firms and management consulting firm as a consequence of that. And we okay. believe and that me, a certain uh, percentage... Sorry, sorry, let me ask it in a different way, right? So when you look at uh, a typical services firm, there's always an order book 
kind of a mindset saying that look this is this is this is the base load of work that is given and on top of it there are you know other things would come so in in your business how do you solve for that base load um, or is it like a typical uh, um, you know i mean you you will not have visibility for the next month uh, i mean and, and you serve as you as you get the business so so if you're saying are there any long term contracts then no if that's what you mean by base load uh, we do not have long term contracts with most of our consulting clients there are a few uh, financial clients who do sign up annual contracts but uh, we we are not very strong over there uh, we've been working on it and hopefully we should be able to get there but again in terms of visibility that what will be the actual usage what we have observed is that it typically depends on working days right uh, it goes down a little towards uh, you know december diwali holi uh, holidays and uh, maybe early part of jan as long as they are working days as long as the country is working we typically get projects but in terms of if, if the base load means long term projects then we we, we don't have visibility but what we have seen is that uh, there is a broadly a similar s- sort of organically growing projects over the last few years Got it. Got it. Got it. So, just extrapolating uh, the previous numbers is the best predictability. And and in terms of Sorry, number sir, of employees, I would like I'll uh, request you to please come back in the queue. Yeah, okay, I'll come back in. Thank you so much, Mr. Vignesh. You can go ahead now. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Vignesh, please go ahead. Hi, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is more on uh, again uh, you know on the part of the cash and cash equivalent that we have around 35 crores and uh, i assume we raised around 18 crores last year last year in 2023 right so wanted to understand how much of that 18 crores have been actually utilized if i'm not wrong 6 7 crores were allocated for the us uh, project in mind so and also wanted to know going ahead how this 35 crores are going to be utilized uh, what part on inorganic and what part on organic some some figures would do if you could help us understand so so abhishek would you like to take the first part yeah so out of that 18 crores we have already utilized almost 14.5 crores and 3.75 crores are to be utilized in the next 6 or 9 months So this was the first part, and the second part will be answered by Gaurav. Okay. So uh, I am not very sure. I completely understood the second question, but uh, I I uh, I think from a inorganic or organic perspective, we would be open. As of now, we haven't uh, planned anything concrete. but uh, we're gradually opening up especially now that we have more visibility on what kind of businesses uh, we would like to grow into and uh, the, the the base stabilization is done we have recruited and we have been training uh, we've kind of grown in terms of team as well so uh, we would be open to uh, something inorganic although to be honest it's not sizable enough but uh, we have been scouting a bit now okay uh, the idea uh, to understand was anything out of the 35 crores has been earmarked for uh, you know organic uh, growth i mean uh, if if something more on the lines of if i can understand how much we have already spent on huxa and uh, what is the plan how much we are planning to spend it in this year and next year okay so just so to Huxa, understand how Huxa... the so we have uh, in the objects we have we have uh, disclosed a private expert panel uh, we didn't have a se- separate brand name huxa at that point of time so it was umbrella term which we used for long term projects for any research oriented workshops trainings etc etc et so the, uh, we came up with the brand name huxa very recently but uh, at a pex panel as a whole i think we have deployed uh, 
got a couple of crows we have built up the team we have got uh, uh, some tech stuff uh, so so abhishek would be able to give you the precise numbers uh, have we earmarked no we haven't earmarked or segregated as of now uh, that is still something which is uh, under the planning phase that uh, whether we would like to build or buy specifically in international markets. Okay, uh, just one last question from my side. Uh, so the, when you said that the idea is to curate around 1000 modules of our own, so what what would the cost be like behind, uh, you know, creating such a uh, module, which is more like, I mean, not uh, easily, you know, uh, it's not easy to create such, uh, uh, you know, modules that are... Very... No, we would be creating that with the help of our experts. To be honest, as of now, we are in, we are also in the learning phase. We haven't made too many. So, uh, uh, we, we are still in the learning phase. As of now, we are delivering projects which are coming from our clients, getting into, into a module shape and uh, uh, hoping to reuse them later. Uh, I think I should be in a better position to answer this question next year. As of now, uh, we I, I don't really have too much visibility into how much is it likely to cost. Sure, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the clarity and all the best, sir. Thank you so much, Vitesh. Mr. Akhil, please go ahead. Hello, am I audible now? Yes, yes Akhil, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi, Mr. Gaurav and team. So I just wanted to understand what is your uh, go-to market strategy for the US because uh, the US being a mature market, there are already uh, larger players who exist there, uh, who have a much bigger export network, you could say, who already have relationships developed. So what is going to be our strategy there? What is going to be our pitch to the clients? Like why would they come and give us their business as opposed to the other larger players? Very valid question. So I've outlined my overall strategy in, in my previous calls as well. But I'll, for the sake of everyone who has just joined, I'll repeat it. So it is broadly three or four steps. Step one is we will like to set up the network at a GE phase, which we have been doing it for a year or so now. We would also like to focus our efforts from outbound India clients. So, so India clients, US experts is where we will use the CE bit to, or the custom impanelments to really bring down our cost of, you know, expanding the panel. That's what we have been trying. Uh, that's step one. We, whenever we get a project across domains, we try to concentrate our bets on two or three domains whenever we are used, supposed to do custom impanelments. So, so that has been the, uh, 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 that has been the toehold of sorts for us. We have been building our network in tech and uh, life sciences. Within tech and life sciences, there are certain specific sectors where we are trying to focus on so that we, we can generate more, uh, we can generate quicker business from those two sectors. So uh, these are the two sectors which uh, where uh, you know cross border stuff really works in India and US. So so that's what we have been trying. I believe that once you get to five thousand experts in a particular domain in a particular geography is where you get a steady state number. So we'll get to know whether that number is uh, really valid for US or is it a higher higher number which is required. But uh, as of now, our target is to focus on two or three domains. And then identify teams, partners within those domains and establish ourselves within those domains as opposed to going at a much horizontal level. So the second uh, or the uh, third step is uh, we have a much lower cost base in terms of getting new experts. And since we are in the expansion mode, uh, we can probably allocate more resources, custom impanelments for any US clients. So for US competitors, doing custom impanelments is a very expensive affair, right? Especially if they are based in US completely. Plus, since we are in the setting up phase of uh, uh, US, uh, we would try and get, or try to try and go deeper into the custom impanelments and spend more time and money over there. So these are the two or three supply side uh, Toeholds we are looking out for. From the demand side, 
uh, we ha mostly have, or uh, if not already, we have converted most of our contracts to a global level. And we are hoping that we would be, and since most of our clients are global in nature, so we are trying to do some farming and, uh, uh, and extract projects or hope for projects from those clients uh, as well. So, so that has been our uh, broad uh, go-to-market strategy, plus a few flips, uh, a few very, uh, uh, we've observed that a lot of Indian uh, consultants, especially uh, moved to US for their higher studies. And uh, that is a, a, a kind of, a, a, again, a toehold for us since they've used us in India, we get some better responses uh, from their uh, new US clients. So, so these two, three points I would like to, you know, mention on the US bit. No, no, thank you. Thank you, Gaurav. That was uh, really helpful. It, it it helps us get a sense of what you're trying to do uh, okay. in the US. Uh, something I'm still not able to understand is what are you doing right that you're growing 40, 50% year on year? Because clearly the consulting industry is not growing so fast. Like it, it, it may be growing but it's not growing 40, 50%. So is it just that the whole industry is at an inflection point right now where more and more people have started to use these export services and the whole industry is growing at 30% and you're gaining market share, that's why it's probably 40% or, or what are you doing that is so right? Well, to be honest, uh, I think the industry is not really growing that much. We might be gaining market share. That's my understanding. Uh, One thing is that we have been very consistent on our gross margins. We try not to increase the prices no matter what. Maybe that's working out. We are very precise in terms of experts or... Uh, so what we have observed that as compared to rest of our peers, we have been much better in terms of per person calls, which means our team has managed to generate far more calls from the same set of experts and clients by virtue of being more domain and research focused is what I would like to believe. Uh, plus, there has been some tailwinds for us. Uh, uh, maybe some of our peers who were, uh, you know, funded during the 2021 era are not doing so well. They were, uh, maybe we got some tailwind from our expansion into US. So, but uh, Touchwood, uh, we've been growing for at, at 30 to 50% on, on an average 35, 40% for the last six, seven years now. Uh, that, that, that's it for my side. Thank you so much and uh, best of luck going ahead. So thank you so much. Mr. Swaraj Mehta, please go ahead. Mr. Swaraj. Hi, I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, so I, uh, hello everyone. Uh, congratulations on a great set of numbers. And I just had two questions. One question was, uh, what is the revenue split between the domestic experts and the uh, foreign experts? And my second question was, uh, and if it's, uh, how are they built? And my second question is, how much of our sales are derived from online channels and through the sales team? Okay, so uh, I, I'll take the second question first. That's relatively easier. Uh, so uh, online means, so we are a B2B company, right? So, so very, it is not an automated platform for now. It's a curated one where we go sign up, sign up a client and only then they are able to send us experts and do those calls uh, online or offline. It doesn't matter, right? So whether they're using our platform or whether they are using emails, uh, it, in some cases, uh, some calls happen on our value chain tools as well, but uh, uh, mostly uh, it is a B2B platform. There is always a, a contract before not any individual cannot just go sign up on the, on the platform and uh, start using calls. That's that doesn't work like that. Second, uh, what is the revenue split of domestic experts and foreign experts? I think uh, Abhishek uh, no. might, might give you a better number. We have Who's discussed the these numbers in detail. 
in mm. uh, the in the last uh, annual report as well. So, so the revenue split uh, we can't say, but the revenue generated from the international experts in those six months was around twenty seven percent of the total revenue. Okay, and but uh, like how are they built? Like Indian uh, foreign experts uh, working for Indian companies are they counted in that or like how does it work? Like how yes. does it? So so basically, what how we count we recognize is that any client if they bill in INR it is counted as an Indian client whether they are talking to Indian client or an Indian or a US exp, uh, Indian expert or a US expert or outside any payment. Whether it's dollars, it's counted as an international expert, which is which will uh, be visible in the international payment section. Okay, got it. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Poonam. Please go ahead. Ms. Poonam? Hello? Yes, yes, please go Sorry, ahead. Sorry, yeah, Mr. Poonam, please go ahead. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yes, you're audible. audible. Please go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I think I joined from some other link. So it's saying Poonam. My name is Mahesh Atal. I'm from Atal Investment <laughs> Advisors. So it's okay. Uh, I would actually love if you can uh, move to a audio-based platform for this con call next time. That's okay. Uh, so basically, Gaurav, uh, the, my question would be more on, the, you know, uh, how many U.S. Uh, experts have we added in this last, uh, uh, say, half year or so? And uh, that, that would be my first query. Second query would be like, uh, what do you see with uh, coming to, you know, uh, see, what have we done is like we have grown our revenues by 33, 34%. And uh, my EBIT, the EBITDA also has grown with the same parameter. So what is that has increased in the cost? Because you being in consulting business, I would hope that with the increasing revenues, our EBITDA should be increasing much more ahead of your our revenues. So what has actually grown up in the cost side? If you can please... I was being I was Mostly busy. during the expansion phase, we have been adding a lot of clients. We have been adding a lot of... A a uh, team in our US, uh, which has been uh, in, in our US business, which is working overnight. So we increased that. We've added a tech team as well. We've added a team for new initiatives as well. That is the primary increase in our cost base. Uh, the other question, I, I think this answers your question. US experts, how many experts you have added? US experts, I think, Abhishek, we just gave the precise number, right? Yeah, so uh, as on 30th September, it was almost 6,300 US experts. So when you say that uh, we could actually get a, uh, in the last, just to the last guy, you were answering that up, uh, after touching 5,000 plus, you'll get a sense mm -hmm. of, you know, uh, that how exactly it will pan out and all. So 5,000 in a domain. In a as domain. Six, as okay. of now, 6,000 are across US. So it is practically a sprinkle, even if we divide over like 50. Also, you know, Gaurav whatever. just wanted to understand that is this... Uh, do you see a general thing that, you know, IT and ITES, uh, does it form a major of your thing? How exactly would you break up into industry wide thing? In, in experts? In, in, in experts? So let's say my revenue is, today is, let's say you have done 35 crores. Yeah, I, I get the question. Roughly, roughly four segments give us about 60% of the business. Uh, the four segments are uh, consumer, uh, life sciences, uh, BFSI and tech. And uh, where do you see that uh, the small part parts and bits? Do you see any everywhere else? There? Chemicals, manufacturing, uh, lots of them. Uh, but these four are give us sixty percent, and then there's a long tail as well. It's it's not like it it suddenly drops after four, and they are equal. It also depends upon which market is doing well. Also, it, is, it is not a fixed number. It is a slightly dynamic number. Or dynamic yeah. uh, breakup or distribution. Okay, Gaurav. Gaurav, uh, I've just uh, had one, this uh, this small query that, you know, uh, what I've heard is that 
the competition what does they what do they do is that they have these types with the visa houses where you know they just kind of you know suppose there is some country which does not give you visa there are some challenges uh, faced by some of the corporates to get the visa of those countries so they generally don't tend to uh, go there and uh, or get the experts from their location to india so are we in touch with those visa houses or maybe in some agency or something where we get that data from them and then we help them to reach out is that kind of arrangement uh, works so we out haven't or... explored that we haven't explored that but that's a good idea we will have a look at it because i have just heard that someone is doing that so just wanted to know any revenues from that side that angle are flowing no not at all i mean we haven't explored that market yet uh, but now that you have suggested we will have a look gorav one more thing is that uh, with a uh, with a business like us we are a tech tech platform right b2b but a tech platform so do you really think because last time also when i asked you this thing you were like let's see you said that let's see let the quarter pan out so i would be again asking you the same query that um, being a tech platform do we really see this 40% growth because i would feel that we could grow much beyond that because we already have a base of experts so where do you think this growth can be like 40% only for the next quarters or so or you you think that this growth will outpace itself like over the quarters no so we are happy with the growth to be honest uh, uh, most of our incremental growth are like is likely to come from not most but uh, 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 we are hoping that exponential growth will come from new initiatives in us but organic growth we expect to come from uh, india as well uh, so, is it a purely tech platform but it also depends upon how many experts we have and how much uh can india absorb at that price point so it's not entirely under our control so the incremental growth will come at the cost of incremental cost also you will have to incur more costs going forward or this cost will be like because i could see that the employee cost have gone up by 50% so no but employee cost has primarily gone up for newer initiatives in us in india it is likely to be uh, 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 uh you know a slow and steady growth in employees no no mostly what i'm serv- saying is mostly india, servicing and what i'm saying is like in the next phase of growth the incremental growth will it have its own incremental costs costs or it will it will be like stagnant on the cost side see if we limit ourselves to the existing set of experts and existing set of clients then uh, it may not the, the cost may not increase right but uh, if we are expanding and we are getting more experts more in more and more geographies and we are also expanding the sales team we are also expanding or trying to get newer clients then obviously the cost will increase okay all right um, that would but, be but the, that but, would... but the, the, the is the incremental cost of servicing the same expert to the same client or a to some extent new inbound client is pretty much just wanted to know whether there will be some addition to the margins or not that's that's my more i mean all right thank you gorov good day i, I think i yes. had explained it in one of the videos how do how do the margins work and how do we aim for these kind of margins by uh, making sure that we are impaneling more and more experts while maintaining the margins i had explained it in a in a video all right i'll uh, thanks thanks for that thanks for your time thank you uh, mr agam would you like to go ahead and ask question Uh, I think he's uh, on mute or something. Uh, we can go ahead with Mr. Pratik. Would you like to ask some questions to the management? I, am I audible? Yes, 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 Mr. Pratik. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. So my quick question was, um, in terms of the experts, uh, where do you see um, the attraction? Um, in terms of the um, sectors um, that are being majorly used upon and the second part of um, that would be um, are you seeing any adjacencies in terms of uh, new sectors being requested for which you do not have experts and you plan to invest into those 
so so i think i already answered the sector bit uh, yes so when, whenever there are new sectors coming up we do start getting queries and that's where we spend some time and uh, spend some time and money on doing custom panelments uh, are there at a broad level these sectors are still hot and uh, but the but the kind of experts we empanel and the kind of queries we service are far more granular so okay. we always uh, we maintain a a steady 85 15 kind of a ratio 85% of our uh, calls are done by experts already on board and we try to make sure that 15 20% of experts are empaneled new whenever we get newer domains very and what would be the time gap between um, a request being made and um, experts being empaneled depends on the domain it could be as low as uh, a, a few 15 20 minutes uh, if we already have the expert on board uh, if it is a, a very popular domain or the ex- request is wide enough then uh, probably a day but if the request is really niche and you have to look out for expert it could take days and sometimes weeks as well okay got it and one last more question. often than not more often than not if it's max 3 days fair enough okay that's a pratik i'm sorry to interrupt but as we're running out of time i request uh, the other participants to also take the question please okay thank you thank you so much mr karthi please go ahead with your question mr karthi we can take the next question from mr sanyam please am audible yes, yes please go ahead yeah so for upon acquisition from the beautiful numbers and uh, my first question is that what is the share of government bodies and institutions both in india and abroad is there any uh, share of government bodies in the consult uh, in the revenue and if not are we planning to add or cater to the government sector or the allied sector like the uh, government bodies and institutions which are also one of the customers which are you know are increasingly taking help of these uh, platforms so are we having any uh, plans for that my first question is that yeah well uh, as of now we don't have and uh, we might explore at some point of time but as of now there is a lot of low hanging fruit which you would like to tap into first before we move on to the government bodies okay uh man uh, man next question is that and like since uh, you said that it's been 15 years that we have uh, made this company we started as a startup and now we are sitting on 60 odd crores as the trailing 12 month uh, revenue uh, of what could be the next trajectory since we have you know now we are creating some base as you told and we are also putting money on the new initiatives in the next 3 to 5 years uh, how how you see the top line growing and uh, going ahead about the volume and the price because you said that your motive is that you are not increasing the margins so is that that if we increase the margin in the coming times our sales might you know get dip or we are comfortable of getting in price increase in the coming years so the position of like few to five years how are you seeing things going ahead so 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 i'm not uh, uh, I, i think growth is going to be a leading question i would not answer that but uh, on on the margins bit uh, so when i say i am not increasing the gross margin doesn't mean our overall margins may or may not increase we are uh, highly focused on making sure we are more efficient so from if if the uh, margin increases come from efficiency we are happy but uh, if the margin only comes from charging more to the client then we are not so having said that uh, over a period of time inflationary ticket size increases are likely to happen in india but for uh, us global numbers or global numbers specifically us the ticket sizes are obviously going to be larger and uh, the gross margin for the call payment to the expert payment is something which we are uh, focused on but overall for everything else uh, we never said that we are not going to work on margins so as long as we are in the expansion phase the margins might be depressed but if we want to we can stop doing or we can uh with withhold ourselves from doing more custom panelments to increase our margins but as of now uh, and in the coming few years we see ourselves in the expansion phase okay thank you so much sir thank you thank you 
I now request Mr. Gaurav to give his closing remarks, please. No, so, so we have a few questions uh, uh, on the chat box and there are some more. Uh, uh, would you like to take that if we have time? Let me just quickly go through all of them. I think we have answered most of them. So, okay. So then thank you so much, uh, uh, Purvangi. Uh, so uh, that should be then thank you so much uh, thank you so much for you all for participating in the earnings conference call so i hope we were able to answer your question satisfactorily and uh, offer some insights into our business so if you have further questions or you would like to know more about the company please reach out to uh, uh, the team at valram advisors so they've been uh, uh, very efficient in hosting this call as well as all, all other uh, uh, initiatives of us. And uh, at a as a closing remark from a company strategy perspective, I think this year we would be, uh, this financial year, we would be uh, moving ahead from our relatively conservative phase of last year where we were more focused on uh, uh, stabilizing, uh, setting up the foundation. This year would be more about uh, experimentation and taking new initiatives and uh, hopefully some inorganic growth as well. So Thank that you, brings Gaurav, us to the end of... yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Over thank you, you uh, the entire Infolian team. And I thank all participants for coming today and uh, taking part in the earnings call. Thank you, everyone.